Hey, how are you? Happy Monday. Welcome to a brand new week, a brand new episode of the Build Series. We're getting woos. We're off to a hot start here, uh, live from New York City. And uh, we have some very special guests kicking off our week here at Build New York City. Uh, they are fresh off the Good Morning America stage where they just performed their smash hit. Seven million streams around the world for this song entitled Where Would We Be? Please welcome Roses and Nikki Romero. <laughs> What's going on? What's just before we even greet each other, guys, this song is incredible. Like really, like I heard you guys were coming on the show, so I checked out the song, of course, and just blew me away. Thanks. Yeah, I mean just like undeniable pop smash in my opinion. We so. love it. I had to fanboy <laughs> before we did anything today, but really I've been playing this like on a loop. It's really amazing. But Thanks. I mean, what a day for you guys. Good morning America this morning. Yeah. How'd it go? Amazing, yeah, it was a dream, a real dream. And you guys were in Times Square for it? Was it outside? I didn't catch it. I was on my way here, but it was, uh, was it outside, inside? How'd it was it inside, yes. We, we went out for a picture, though. So, so we went there, and it was like a picture of us. We touched outside. Yeah. yeah. It was like a picture of us at Times Square, which was pretty unreal. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? I want to get into you guys as a duo and the dynamics of this partnership, making music like this. But I, I think i got to start, in terms of the dynamics of this duo, with how you guys both prepared for the big national television performance yesterday. Roses, you were a nervous wreck, it seemed, yes. on social media. And I loved how transparent <laughs> and honest you were. It was it was like, it started kind of subtle, like, hey, here's a quote like, about being I'm actually worried. dying. Yeah. And then it just progressed, progressed to like, okay, guys, I'm going to be very honest. We're going to get to know each other today. I'm a nervous wreck. Uh, meanwhile, this is how Nikki, we have a clip of Nikki, uh, how, how you prepared for the big day. <laughs> The difference. So while Rose is like sweating it out, thinking about the GMA performance, you are uh, you are taking in New York yeah. City, my friend. The sandwiches were really good there. That is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> So is this, is this apropos, though, oh for sort God. of the working uh, relationship between you guys? Are you more the chilled, laid back, and you're maybe overthinking things sometimes? Yeah, I would say. So. I mean, I don't know. I think it's pretty balanced. There are times when I'm laid back, he's, you know, doing his thing about worrying, and then, you know, it flip-flops. It's just like, uh, it's interesting, as, as Rose is just explaining, um, we kind of, like, balance each other out, but... For me, I'm not. I used to be on stage uh, playing an actual instrument. So the first time I played an actual instrument was on the show, and I was at Conan, and and then another one, that was with Roses as well, and then the second one was today with GMA. And, and <laughs> it's kind of odd to do your first ever like uh, you know uh, live playing like right away on American television. You know, so yeah, that was kind of nerve wracking for me. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically because you're somebody that plays to. I mean. Massive crowds. You go on YouTube, and I mean, you know, whether it's Ultra, any music festival that you're at, there, it's, I mean, it's just a sea of people. What is more nerve wracking? Is it knowing that there could be millions of people on the other end of the camera at a, in a television studio, or is it in a live setting like that? You know, it's, it's a funny thing, because I think it's all about if you're uh, comfortable with what you're doing at that very moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm performing as a DJ, it's much easier. If I'm in a, you know, like a, a talk show talking about something, I wouldn't be that nervous. It's just about if you're performing something, you're very, very vulnerable. So um, normally I'm in my comfort zone. If I perform as a DJ, it's just like, you know, I know the drill. It's Of course, it's like a massive sea of people sometimes. And we did like 80 or 90,000 in India once. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like the amount of people don't don't matter anymore. It's 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 the TV shows. If you're performing live, oh man, <laughs> a whole nother world. You know, it's different. Yeah, but it's at the same time it's very exciting. We've been speaking about this today. Um, it's a great opportunity because you know there where like, where the fear is, that's where you need to go most of the times because you know. Otherwise, you stay in that comfort zone. You, so you got to get out of it. And it's a great opportunity for all of us to do this on live television. Absolutely, yeah. You know, you speak about the Conan performance. I was, I was struck by your caption on Instagram, Roses, and I'll tell you why. Because I watched the uh, Conan performance before I saw you post about it on, on Instagram, and I was so impressed because, you know, as you now can probably attest to, those are difficult performances because mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot smaller than it looks like on television. It's not necessarily your fans in the audience. And you just, you're very limited in terms of the resources of how you can make that sort of performance engaging. And I thought you guys did a hell of a job when I watched it. I was like, you know, I really got into it. It was a very lively performance on Conan. But you were kind of, you know, you went back, you were second guessing yourself a little bit, mm -hmm. but it sounds like that's kind of how you are as an artist. You, you're your toughest critic. Yeah, I think it's also important for me to, to you know, portray that, life on social media is more perfect than reality. And I really wanted to capture that for my fans and saying, you know, it, it looked perfect, it sounded perfect maybe to you guys, but to me, you know, I'm 
you know, it, I was shaking, you know. So I thought it was important for me to to mention that it's it's more than it seems. Absolutely. And I'm so happy you're doing that. You and a couple other artists come to mind where I feel like we are entering this new age of, of transparency on social media where it's kind of cool to admit like, hey, we're not like perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. These pictures that have filters on them, you exactly. know? Exactly. Uh, so let's dive into this dynamic of you two and how the song came to be. I understand that uh, at square one, essentially, you guys both were looking for the next step, the next single, what the next song for both of you would be. And then what happened? Did you have this song, Roses? Yeah, so it, it it was kind of like um, an unproduced version of the song, and um, Nikki had um, loved it, so he decided he was going to pick it up and work on it, and I was obviously like, yes, please. <laughs> so, yeah, and he's so talented. He did such an amazing job with it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a, a very meaningful song for both of us because it me obviously means a lot. Um, but, like, you know, lyrically and uh, the story behind it, it, it's it's both of our stories. So it's, you know, it's perfect. And you so you gave him essentially probably what your vocals and maybe some keys. Yeah. And then so when you when you're given sort of that raw demo coming from the world of electronic music, what do you do with it? Like, take us through that process, because I think it's really fascinating. Um. Yes, so most of the times it's um, as a producer and with our management team, we receive a lot of demos. We get very lucky to have the opportunity to listen through so many different demos and creations and products of people. Um, and then it's very hard to pick out the right songs and then also with the, the, the vocal that has, uh, the vocals that have the most uh, character in it because like there are thousands of people that can sing a song you know, and, and, and another thousand that can do a great job on singing that particular song. But then still, it's it's very, very hard to find that characteristic uh, voice to the song, you know, that makes that song stand out, that makes you believe what's being told in the song. So I think when I received those demos, especially I received two, I can't reveal the name of the other one, but um, so I received two of, uh, of Roses and I was like, wow, like what she's describing in this song, uh, it takes me back, you know, and I believe all the words that she's saying. It's like it's like you believe it's like a story that's being told, um, and you can relate to every word, you know. So it really brought me back, and it really took me somewhere. And I was like, okay, if she's the one that that's that's able to tell me that story, and I believe it right away, then she's the right voice, you know. So she, we, we the, the song was great, the chords were great. It was very. Yeah, there were actually three versions of that song because there were so many different approaches to it. I thought it was so good. that It gave us a hard time to find the right version. Yeah, yeah. you know what's funny? You talk about the different approaches to that song. As a fan of the song, I still, I've probably listened to it a hundred times by now, I can't decide if it's a happy song or a sad song. But I mean, I think depending on the day, it can kind of be either, right? It's like, you know, you're talking about leaving home essentially and, and looking back at the people you may have left behind. Mm -hmm. When you sing the song, and when you perform the song, Nikki, is it, do you, is it, does it come from a, a place of melancholy? Does it come from a place of sort of like, I'm glad I got out of there? Or is it, what's the disposition you sing it from? Um, you know, it's a mix. It's like you said, sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad. Sometimes I'm like, I couldn't imagine my life being anywhere else but here. And it's just me reflecting on like, I can't, I can't believe that that's who I used to be. And, and I used to be dreaming of being this person that I'm sitting here today. And so it's kind of a reflection on saying like, I can't. I can't believe I'm here. Like, where would I have been if I just didn't try? You know, so it's it's me being thankful that I'm here. And then also there's other times when I'm looking back and I'm like, I mean, what would have happened if I was just on that same old couch? Right, right. Similar sentiments, Nikki? Uh, yeah, like what Rosa said. But when I'm performing live, I just wait for that Nintendo 64 part who brings me right back to Mario Kart. <laughs> well, I want, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to talk about that. I, I take this to be an authentic song and I don't take you guys to be posers. So were you guys pretty big N64 gamers back in the day? Oh, yeah. Okay, so oh, you said yeah. Mario Kart was your game. You know what? We have the Switch with us so we can actually play. Are you <laughs> serious? Yeah, it's no joke. Oh, my gosh. The no. next song has to be about the Switch, though. Yeah. I don't know. How yeah. There you go. There's a nice product <laughs> placement in there, I think. Uh, so, but here's the here's the million dollar question. Mario Kart's the game, great game. Who do you pick when you when you're racing Mario Kart? 
Do you have like a go-to character? So I think in the Nintendo 64 version, which is the older one, I'll go for Bowser, but he's like this big. So it's really hard to, to ride with him because half of your view is gone when you're riding with him. <laughs> okay. But right now, right now, you can pick your own character and make your own character. So now it looks like me and um, <laughs> I'm not riding as good, but at least it looks like me. So. This is on the Switch? You can make your own character? You can make your own character, yeah. yeah. Wow. All right, Bowser. Now, wasn't Bowser a bad guy? Uh, I think he just looks as a bad guy. He looks like a bad guy. He's a misunder- guy. Bowser's just misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His huh. favorite color is still pink. Poor guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Uh, were you pretty big on the uh, Mario Kart back in the day? Yes. Did yes, you have totally. a favorite? Yes. Character. Yeah, Who's I mean, yours? of course, I loved Princess Peach. Of course, right? That was yeah. like the go-to. I mean, go-to. But I've switched it up. I'm like villager now, and like I go into the uh, other characters. Do you see. create your own, like in Nikki? Does? I haven't done that yet. That's pretty next no. level. But I'm not gonna lie. We play on tour all I'm the time. I'm still waiting for a challenge. You know, like she didn't didn't challenge me. And yet she's backing down. Yeah. Roses. You know, I, I'm, I'm letting him it. build his confidence because it <laughs> might be taken out. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> that is awesome. No, I. The song is a very authentic song, as I've said, and I have to imagine anyone who gets into the music business, as each of you have, and you've had success in the music business, there had to be that moment where you leave the sort of proverbial small town for the big city. Uh, what was that moment for you, Roses? And then also, I'd like you to show yours, Nikki, but first. Gosh, I think I think the, the turning moment, or um, yeah, moment for me was kind of... Um, not finishing college and that was kind of the thing that I was leaving behind and so um for me it was I had the song with the chain smokers and I was like I had you know I had all these plans in place my I had my plan b and I knew what I was going to do while I was building my career but it just so happened that you know I was hearing my voice on the radio and I was like I, I honestly I don't even know what to do at this point so I guess that was kind of a turning point for me where I was like I need to like you know let go of my old life and just embrace who I want to be. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that was kind of my turning point. And not only was your, was your voice on the radio, the name of the hit single yeah. was Roses, yeah. which I always thought was so cool. Yeah. Uh, briefly, before we get to, to your story, Nikki, uh, how did that song and just, I mean, there was a top 10 record on the Billboard Hot 100, just, you know, smash upon smash hit. How did that change your relationship with electronic dance music before... That I, I had that. no intentions of being an electronic dance music artist uh, whatsoever. But when I had worked with Alex and Drew, it just kind of opened up an outlet for me that I didn't even know was there. You know, it was like somebody was showing me the door and they were like, all you have to do is walk through. So it's it was just like, it has opened up so many pathways. And, you know, I've fr- since then I've worked with Galantis and Cash Cash, Nikki. So it's kind of been it's been what's keeping my career going because it's such an embracing world and and happy and emotional and free. And so it's kind of helped me musically to be successful. Right. And then what was that plan B? What was the backup plan if this wasn't working out? Well, I I was initially going to be a nurse and then I was like, I don't don't know if I can do that. But then I changed to like... um, journalism so I was like if I'm gonna write I want to be a writer if I'm not gonna make it as a music writer I'll just you know I'll be a a writer in the newspaper as if that's just as easily attainable you know but yeah interesting Nikki when was that moment for you where you you decided you know I'm gonna really go for this thing um, I think that moment still has to come, to be honest. <laughs> Real, wait, wait, what do you, what's that mean? <laughs> what? What? Plot twist. What are you, like half in, half out of this music thing? <laughs> no, I, I mean, <laughs> maybe this is like a language barrier, I don't know. But I'm from Holland, I'm from Amsterdam, so right. it's funny. Um, no, I never thought about it that way. I w- I'm just like going with the flow. Like, as long as I make enough money, you know, to right. make a living, uh, to travel the world and, you know, to do what I like. I never realized, like, oh, okay, this is a thing now, you know? I just went with the flow, and and I don't know. It felt like it was it was slightly progressing all the time, mm-hmm. but I never realized, okay, now this is it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that point will never come, at least not for me, because, you know, when you realize, okay, this is it, I'm here now, it feels like you achieved something, but for me, it's more about the, you know, the um, uh, not so much of achieving a destination, but more about, the travel to it. Yeah, you know the I mean? journey, of course. The journey, exactly, yeah. Well, what, uh, let me rephrase it then. What was the moment where you realized that you could do this, that you, that you were very talented and that this could be more than a hobby but a career? You know what's funny? Um, every time in, I'm in a studio with someone like really creative and really amazing, like Nile Rogers, I saw a picture of his here. Uh, I was in the studio with him in his house in New York where he did the production for, uh, I thought it was called, was it like a virgin? I think it was like a virgin. So, and I was like, okay, this is the studio 
where he made all those songs. Like, what makes me belong in this studio right now? Like, just being able to program some beats, you know, playing some chords. This guy can play a guitar like no one else can. I'm not great at either of this. I just got lucky being, you know, good enough to program the beats. So that feels very uncomfortable still sometimes. Or when I had this moment with Rihanna when she walked in and, and we did a song for her uh, album, Unapologetic, with David Guetta. He brought me to that studio session. I was like, why on earth would he bring me there, you know? Still, it feels very unreal to be surrounded with people like that until you realize that those people, most of the times, even though they're superstars, feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. All people at the end of the day, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Conan, of course, GMA this morning. Another place you performed the song was down at Ultra this year. Mm. That looked amazing. It looked very hot, though. Uh, yeah. How hot was it? I mean, it was like, it must have been, I mean, it was a scorcher down there, but what was Ultra like? It, it was amazing. Um, speaking of hot, I decided, like, during the second drop, I was going to take my shoes off. Okay. And the stage was, like, sitting in the sun, like, all day long. I, like, realized, like, halfway through the second verse, I'm like, my feet are burning off. So I start, like, sprinting around the stage, like, the whole performance. Is that when you go up on the, the DJ? Yeah, I was like, it's even hot up here. I'm, like, switching sides. And, yeah, it was... That's so, because I, I watched it, and I was like, I was like, where's Rose is going? <laughs> it literally looks like you're running away at one point. <laughs> Their plan C is, like, being a like, sprinter on Olympic Games. <laughs> next year <laughs> everyone's uh, like wow you really moved around up there i was like i'll tell you <laughs> that is wild now had you ever performed at like a, a festival like that before yeah i've done coachella with the chain smokers um i've done firefly that was the first time i've ever done ultra though so that was okay. really fun yeah i i love festivals because people i mean while the performance and like my vocals people still listen to them, they're not really there to, like, critique you, you know? They're there to just celebrate the music. Right. Which is so fun and free, and you're just able to be, you know, fun and free. Yeah. Um, That's probably a really important reminder you probably tell yourself as an artist, right? Mm -hmm. That these people aren't here to judge you. Right. They're here to have a good time. Exactly. It's a great uh, little message. They are. No, they are. But you have to understand that the people who are physically there, you know, they'll have a great time. There's people behind computers and laptops that just <laughs> that just sit there, like, you know, feeling bad about not being there and then just criticizing everything yeah. they see. Those Trolls. people do it as well. Yeah. So that's you have to keep in mind that, you know, there's most of the time, 90 percent or 80 percent of the people will have positive feedback. But there will always be people that judge you for something. Right. Um, even though you think you've done it right, you know, there will always be people saying like, oh, you know, it should have done that way or right. doesn't look right. Or look how, you know, how bad that mix was or like this vocal's not sitting right. Or there will always be something. So at the end of the day, it's also about realizing that, you know, that you gave your best and that's what counts. And people enjoyed because you were there, you saw that people had a good time. Yeah. And don't always look too much on the internet about how other people were feeling. They were not there. Right. That's an important message. I think at least that's how it feels for me. Yeah. yeah. I think his plan. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I think uh, your plan said you could be an inspirational speaker. That's how, that, was, that sounded <laughs> yeah. pretty good. Here he goes. Uh, you actually made headlines in the world of dance music. Speaking of Ultra, you know, Swedish House Mafia, of course, made their grand return uh, in, at Ultra this year. And then you posted something to the effect of, of uh, that Progressive is back. Or progressive is coming back. And that really that made a lot of news in the EDM world. Did you want to sort of add some context to that caption? I feel like music is going up and down all the time. Like, uh, it's like the sea, you know, and with the moon, like it attracts and then goes up and down, and, you know, like how life should be as well. It's just like, it's a matter of, it's like an up and down affair. Mm -hmm. So I, it feels like that with music and with progressive and now hip hop is, and, and R&B. Uh, for example, I did a lot of, of plays in Vegas and then I saw in Vegas, I saw it was all about EDM and progressive in 2014, 13. Then there was like hip hop returning there and you know, a lot of hip hop acts got back there and it just feels like it's going up and down all the time. And it felt like this moment of the year around Ultra, it felt like progressive was making, uh, you know, a step back and, you know, upwards. It felt like it was coming back. And it's funny because a lot of people have been saying, yeah, you shouldn't make progressive, now you should make this or you should make trap. And, and I'm saying I'm not a trap artist, so I can do what I think that I'm good at, you know? I can try making a trap song, but I know there's someone else who does a much better job than me on trap. <laughs> so I'd rather stick with what I do and try to work on that and progress right. on progressive. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
No, that's, I mean, that's a, it's an important thing to understand as an artist, right? Is like if you, to, to just be authentic to yourself. We had David exactly. Foster here, uh, you know, acclaimed uh, songwriter, producer. He's done a ton of hits. And he was talking to us about like in the 90s when, when pop music changed from the ballads that he did and turned into, you know, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. He didn't follow that. He remained true to himself. And, you know, he still has a career to this day. So I think that's a, it's a great sentiment. What's coming up next for you guys in 2018? I know you, I'm going to be seeing you in August at the Billboard Hot 100 yeah. Festival. That's very exciting out very on uh, Jones Beach, Long Island. Uh -huh. What can we expect? I know it's like I'm asking you what, what can we expect in August, but are you, tell us about a, a live Roses set if, for anyone watching at home that has not experienced it. I, d I think it's, it's not what people expect. It's very high energy. Um, it is very EDM and dance, and um, I move around a lot, you know, so it's, it's nothing like kind of like GMA where, we, I was more still. It's it's definitely very high energy and dancing. <laughs> and no George Stephanopoulos at the uh, Billboard Hot 100 set, probably. Yeah. No, no news anchors at the at the Hot 100 set. <laughs> yeah. And she's bringing a, like a great guy, Benny Brown, that does a great oh, job. Oh yeah. Yes. Drummer. And wasn't he? Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, he did Conan really with you guys, and he yeah. did. Did he do GMA too? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. He we we he and I are like two peas in a pod. He's like That's one awesome. of my best friends. Yeah. Very cool. Nikki, anything you can kind of touch on right now coming up in 2018? Uh, yeah, I have a few other songs coming up. One is with Steve Aoki and a featuring artist that, that we're not 100% confirmed on yet, so okay. I, I can't name him, <laughs> name it right yet. Looking at my manager like, oh. <laughs> You're like, thumbs up, uh, thumbs down? Didn't say it, didn't say it. Um, another collab with Dimitri Vegas on Like Mike. It's the guys of Tomorrowland, uh, which is a big festival in Europe that a lot of people are wanting to go to for a long time. Um, a song with... Uh, Tayo Cruz is coming up. Uh, I love it. I saw him pop up at your opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it love Tayo Cruz. Him. I hadn't heard from him in a minute. Yeah, no, it's true. But he's a really talented writer and a, a performer. And he's also the genius behind the song Without You of Usher and David Guetta. Wow. He wrote a lot of hit songs that we don't know of. Yeah. You know, but he actually is the brain behind all those lyrics. Yeah. So I'm really happy to work with him. And I think that he deserves um, like another... How would you say that? I don't want to say another chance. I mean, like... Another run. Feels, another big run. Another run. Yeah, that feels, big run. Yeah, of course. It feels like he had his first run, took some time off. Mm -hmm. and it feels like he's getting back on, on the writing, you know, and, yeah, getting up yeah. there. And that I voice. Him. Amazing he's, voice. Yeah, and he's really good in phrasing. So I'm, I'm really happy to work with him, and I'm super proud to be part of that project. That's awesome. All right, guys, let's turn the show over to the audience. We've got some questions to get to. We'll start right here. Yeah, hi, Roses and hi. Nikki. My name is Danny. I'm also a singer-songwriter and an artist. And my question is, um, do you have a particular, this is for Roses, um, do you have a particular songwriting um, process? Like, do you write when you get inspired, or do you have a plan to write every day? Like, how, how does that come to you? It's, it, it varies. Sometimes I'm like, I need to write right now. I have something in my head. I have a lyric idea. But other times I'm like, I'm going to go in the studio and just work. So it kind of varies between what I'm feeling that day and what I need to get done kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, usually it just starts with like I'm humming a melody in the shower or something. And I'm like, oh, I need to voice note this. And then I'll just head down into my studio and work. You? Yes, yeah. I think that the um, the biggest thing for an up and coming artist is to learn how to do it all of yourself. Like learn how to produce your own demos, what you like on your vocals, how to play instruments, write lyrics, all that. Because the less that you have to rely on other people, the better in this industry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to our second studio question. Hi. Uh, so, uh, does uh, working on collaborations affect your own music when you uh, you know whenever you're creating new music and do you find either more, either one uh, more rewarding or more fun, like working in a collaboration or just making your own? Um, working, it's it's a different dynamic. So like with Nikki, it's a team, you know. So we're gonna have double the push of the song and double the emotion behind it. Whereas when it's a sing, when it's a solo song, it's um, you know, it's it's harder to. I wouldn't say. Uh, get out there, but but it is it's a harder process, I think, because you're you're the one solely being critiqued, other than it being a team thing, you know. If that makes sense. I think also a lot of songs are, and what people don't know is most of the songs that are up there, and for example, the Billboard Top Hundred are not written only by one person. Most of the time, a song is like um, a collaboration between more than five or six people. If you take if you would take an average David Guetta or Justin Bieber song. You know, it could be like five people that worked on that song. 
So even though it's one face or one artist, most of the times it's a collaboration between more than four or five people. Exactly. And that's the best process because then you, you, know, you, you share that emotion and you share the process and then it feels like it's a joint, it's almost like a joint venture. It's like an, a joint adventure as well. So it's, it's funny, yeah. Awesome. We have time for one more question. Come from right over here. Hey, guys. Um, I was wondering for both of you, uh, is there an artist that you guys look up to for inspiration for your music? Um, I honestly get inspired by a lot of people, but I think one of the guys that really inspires me is Calvin Harris because um, I, it's funny because I did a song with him uh, a long time ago, and it's called Iron on his album, 18 Months. And back then he used to only, you know, sometimes produce a song. And then, and then he sent me like his vocals on a production I've already done, and that became a collaboration. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And then after that, you saw how he was like progressing, and he, he writes his own vocals, he sings his own vocals if he wants to. He thinks he doesn't sound great, but I think his hit's proven that he is singing great. Um, he produces them, and he, he also has the marketing plan, how he wants to put it out. He does the whole thing. Um, that really caught my eye. And then Skrillex, for example, is also someone who is just thinking out of the box, you know, and just, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I don't care what people think of it. I'll just do this. And he, for example, he made Justin Bieber, Bieber like, I don't want to say big again, but it feels like he gave him another um, space to grow in for some reason. Like, Justin Bieber was not in the EDM world and was not in the dance world. Skrillex worked with him, and suddenly he was like, also in the EDM world, everybody wanted to work with him. So it's that I like people that take that, you know, chances and risk sometimes. Uh, for me, it, it's more like I, I look up to people. Like, I obviously, I... Um, I admire Adele, and I love how how long her life has been in the music industry, and that's something that I want so badly. But as far as um, you know, looking up to people, I try to kind of not listen to pop music and not listen to to mainstream music only for the sole fact that I want to try to remain unique and not try to hop on what's what's coming next or what's what's in. So for me. I, while I look up to these people, I look up to them in, in how hard they're working and how long they're lasting rather than the music they're making and things like that, if that makes sense. So what do you listen to on like a daily basis if you're not... Because I think it's great to not listen to the radio, right, and be swayed yeah. by that. But like, what if you, you must be listening to music all the time. Like, what do you, what's kind of... I do. I listen to a lot of country music. I'm a huge country music fan. I love Casey Musgraves, okay. um, Miranda Lambert. Like, these people like, I admire deeply with their stories and things like that. I also I listen to a lot of alternative music, like Kings of Leon, 1975. So it kind of gets me out of the world of, like, I'm comparing myself to somebody and I need to be doing that rather than, you know, now I'm, I'm appreciating the music and just having fun listening to it. Could we see you doing any country? Because, you know, pop and country, that's like the new thing. I know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm taking a trip to Nashville next month, so we'll see. That's awesome. Very exciting stuff, guys. Well, very uh, exciting day for you guys, and thanks for stopping by. Again, if you're watching at home, you have not heard this, shame on you. Where would we be? The new Smash single, guys. Go out and stream it, pick it up. Do whatever you got to do to get your ear on it. And thank you so much to Nikki and Roses. Thank you. Thank you.